All right, thanks for staying with us now. Nigeria has one of the highest um, rates in Africa of suicide. According to the World Health Organization, the suicide rate in Nigeria is 6.1 per 100 people, which is higher than the global average of 9.4 per 100,000 people. Sorry, 100,000 people. Um, there are a number of factors that contribute to high suicide rates in Nigeria. Um, including mental illness, poverty, so, uh, substance abuse, and cultural factors. Suicide is a serious issue that affects people all, of all ages and mm -hmm. all backgrounds. It's important to be aware of the warning signs for individuals um, in crisis so that you can help them get the help they need. In the spirit of, of course, World Mental Health Day that we discussed yesterday, um, today we're discussing suicide prevention, and we are asking what are the warning signs for individuals in crisis. Um, just paying attention. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 1-8038-4663. I want to bring in our guest in a minute. I just want to hear your thoughts, you know, how you pay attention to people. I remember talking yesterday with Jennifer and Dami. No, sorry, with um, Mary and Dami. And I was saying to them, for me, I think sometimes you need to really just observe people. If you see someone that's been in high spirit and all of all of a sudden the person is just calm, that should give you a pointer that something is going wrong. Like I know that, you know, uh, especially again with the way the economy is going and the way things are going, people would actually, yeah. you know, just be falling in and out of depression even without them knowing. Yeah. So um, the key thing is to pay attention because if you look at the number of people now just giving up and saying they want to kill themselves is just getting higher and higher. I don't know if you guys saw the video I shared. I think I shared it on the group. The guy in the UK on the bridge where these guys were videoing. They were literally videoing him and driving and thinking he was not going to jump. The next thing, I mean, he had a very lovely car. He parked the car. I even made a joke that she the makeup artist said, ah. And she would think about her car. Who would drive it back home? And she would not commit suicide. Mm. But some people are not able to see beyond mm -hmm. the pain or whatever it is that they're going through. Mm. So the guy actually jumped. I mean, there are so many videos. We've seen video of one guy, I think by this, um, on this Lekia 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 yeah. where he was, yeah. he tied a rope to his neck and they, and they had to, to you know, him. To, yeah. to, to, to. So I mean, like literally, if, and I was saying to, to um, Mary and Dami yesterday, I said, before somebody gets to that particular stage, there have been several stages. Mm. I just think it's us not paying attention to the signs. I don't know. Do you, do you guys have any quick no, word totally on that? I totally agree with you. It's us not paying attention because everybody's in their own world. Mm. Everyone has become selfish. Everyone is thinking of themselves. So no one you pays attention. Them, no, I don't blame them. But guess what? That's what we were talking about earlier. It still goes to that mindset and humanity. No matter how bad you things get for you i'm not saying that you do not have that tendency but it's also very important one of the very most important things is surround the kind of people you surround mm. yourselves with so um i'm sure that if if your mood was to change like i'm sure that there are days that we would mm. just look at you and be like soon. are you okay mm. and that are you okay is not are you okay mm. is are you okay mm -hmm. and then depending on how and i'm waiting to read the response from you because their behaviors like if you have someone who's always lively and all of, all of the sudden the person goes like below 50 yeah, percent yeah there's certain behaviors that we have how to about you jennifer to. um so I, I agree i agree with angie and also agree with you but i also know that sometimes the signs are not very glaring mm. right because you have people who are always in high spirit Right, and even when they are going through something, that high spirit is what they use to mask what they are going mm. through. Mm. Right, so one minute you're seeing them, they're all vibed up, they're laughing with everyone, they're cracking jokes everywhere they go, but then they are suffering inside. on the inside, right? And that's because, oh, if 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 I look sad, that's or, even the one that's yeah, there to even notice because they feel like if, if they look sad or mm. they they they, mm. they look down. It would affect everyone around them. So they're always looking out for the feelings of other people. And, and they're not paying attention to themselves. themselves. Let yeah, me bring in so our guest. Like I'm sure she's itching to join the conversation. Kemi Shakwe Agbebi is a multi um, potential light, right? That's the word. <laughs> With a commitment to helping broken people from healing at the intersection of her interests. Now she leads the team or at room 707, a support group for people finding comfort, grief, depression, addiction, and abuse. Um, 
she started her career in 2021 um, and the group has since coached more than 300 people who have passed through the therapy program while at the same time driving their catch um driving their catching them young project targeted at secondary school students so she's equipped with a pharmacy degree and an mba from a global business school she's currently the global head of um, special projects at m pharma a pioneering health tech um, company spanning africa and she's joined us live in studio i uh, apologize if i murdered some things there but <laughs> fine print is not working for me this night i need to wear my glasses but thank you so much i mean it's such a pleasure to finally meet you in person the last right. time we were on, on set um i watched from home and i thought that was a very deep conversation right mm -hmm. and um i think it's just going to pick up from where you stopped <laughs> that's what i would say i mean yesterday was Sweet. yeah yesterday was world um health mental health mental day health yeah. and i mean hearing jennifer talk about you know people in high spirit you know and all of that and what india talked about uh everybody i believe that you know i said it that nigeria is a stressor nigeria is a <laughs> like literally like you really must be very very extremely con con conscious mm -hmm. right you must be very conscious and pay very um, keen interest in your uh, mental state in mm -hmm. nigeria because sure. As it stands now, with everything that is going around, it stresses you. Then you now come to Lagos, it's worse, right? Because there are just so many things that when you go out there, it is almost hitting, you know, on your mental state. I saw a video that somebody post, posted on, on road rage. Literally, these two guys bastardized their cars. Um, Benga and Inka posted it. If you've not seen that video, you need to go and see like... D damage their entire the everything, the, like and the the, the like the, the truck now finally. I said, this thing can only be that these guys are not okay, because I don't know what will get me to that point where I'll start to do these buzzbows on the road. It's not possible. You can't find me there, but that's where we are. So we have a lot of people that are going through some of this crisis, mm -hmm. and some have not been able to express it. The only way they think is best for them to express this crisis that they are going through is suicide right so how do we start to pay attention what are the things that we're supposed to be doing you mm. understand where how did how would we get to that point where somebody would say you know what i'm i think i'm done and just need to take my life so where do we start from you know when um jennifer yeah was speaking and she said you know it's so difficult to find out for some people because they're in ice spirit and all that that's actually a trigger that's a sign rather mm. that's a warning sign you know i i once engaged a girl that I used to admire from afar because she was high spirited, always smiling, and I'm like. And then one day she sent me a message and said, "I, um, KSC, I need to talk to you." I said, "Hey," so I go, "Hey," and then it's like, like, "I really need to talk to you. Mm -hmm. I'm so going through a lot, you know." So I understood. I had to, but I was so shocked that this girl. I used to feel like I'm not even as happy as this girl, <laughs> you know. So through these um, emotions that are extreme emotions or when you show a lot of you know it's even a sign mm -hmm. whether it is high spirited so if you have someone around you that is always high spirited you know that's a sign you actually want to get a little bit close to them right mm -hmm. it's actually a sign right so um how do we what's the question again yes how do we start to where do we start from in where do we identifying start from? These signs? in identifying yeah. it so suicide prevention is has to be a comprehensive approach and um health standard or who standard there are at least nine principles that has to be at play today's topic is addressing just one of them which is to identify and assist you know the individuals that mm -hmm. are in crisis societal crisis is basically um an intense or severe very severe psychological pain that you believe would not go away right i mean i've felt this pain before so i understand when i was a teenager i'd attempted suicide like two or three times you know because i felt like i wasn't wanted you know now that i'm into coaching then i see that oh that was really red signals you mm. know i would be going past the bridge and i just feel like you know we're just jumping yeah, inside mm. that's a child and i felt like oh what people do didn't care people don't care about so you see when it comes to when people feel that way, it doesn't matter what got them to that mm. point. You have to validate. Do you know I've spoken with a young girl that had attempted suicide? 
And by the time I got into the story, she told me last year, I said, where did this start from? She lost her phone. She lost her phone and it had all her money. Was, you know, she just, and then it's like, are you kidding me? You know, so, but when they get to that point, it doesn't matter what led them to that point. You have to validate that feeling. And psychological pain can be so traumatic. It can be so traumatic that you feel it as a physical pain. Mm. You know, when I lost my mom in 2018, I felt pain at that level. Mm. I used to think that I had a very high pain threshold. I had, I have three kids. Labor pain was like, I'll be smiling in the, you know. But when I lost my mom, I felt a different kind of, a pain. Different kind of pain. It was psychological Yet I felt as though I had a heavy stone on my chest. And I literally heard a spirit saying, you know what, just take a knife. Every other part of your body is okay, you're fine. You're not, you don't have malaria, you don't have anything. Why don't you just take a knife and remove that heavy stone? It, it was there. I couldn't sleep or eat for three days. And it was heavy, it was there. I felt like every other part of my body is good. Let me just take that thing out. But, um, of course, you know what started have turned out. But that's how deep psychological pain can, pain can be. So, suicidal crisis just happens when you're going through that intense emotional pain. It's almost physical in nature. People don't understand because how do you tell? Where is pain in you? You can't even say, ah, there's a chest. Imagine I'm telling someone beside me, there's something in my chest. We can't see anything on your chest, excuse me. But I was feeling it, you know. So, really, warning signs for... Um, Suicide prevention, you know, there are at least two types. There are those that are at immediate risk and those that are just having acute crisis. Mm. So they're just um, severe risk. Immediate risk, when somebody starts telling you about um, being fantasized about the idea of dying or that, oh, I just Google how to die, mm. you know. And well, these, things mm -hmm. these things are on Google. These things are on Google, right? So, oh, there's a clinic in, uh, is it China now or where now, that you Australia. go and actually, Australia. is it where? You, know, you choose to die. Yes, you, you go and oh, actually you know for suicide now. now. Mm -hmm. will, it's a guided, ah-ah, uh -uh, university, continuous. Exactly. So, you know, <laughs> when you start like saying, that. speaking about, um, fantasizing about the idea of dying, maybe, ah, well, the death is not supposed to be beautiful, you know, when someone just fantasizes, you know, that's, that's an immediate risk. Number two, when they start telling you about, um, they feel like they are burdened to others. Nobody cares about me. Mm. And you just sense that they are at risk of, um, your, um, of their lives or something. That's, that's another immediate risk. Now, for severe risk or acute cases, um, then you hear things like um, they start withdrawing from family and friends. Or they start giving out things. They start giving out prized possessions. Mm. You have to be very cautious. Or they start being nice to everybody. I just want you to know that I care about you. And they are sending you to your family and friends. That's, that's a red signal, you know, or anxiety or somebody that has prior um, indication of depression, you know, those guys are severe risk. Mm -hmm. Now, there are another class of people that they've actually attempted. I've met people that they've attempted suicide up to six times. And really, when you listen to their story, <laughs> stories, in your, for me personally, I feel like oh, this problem is much is enough to us like maybe it's okay <laughs> you know so people life can really 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 be tough right mm. so those guys that have attempted suicide before yeah, those ones immediate are also, risk yeah. immediate risk this person is so there's every life. chance that any slight trigger they can any try to get mm. so like um on my group i've had people send me their last notes with tears i want you to know you're the last person that i'm going to speak with on wow. earth because i'm about to end my life wow. So the last notes with the tears, send it, you know, via IG. And then I said, oh, I have to start engaging the person, right? I mean, we're going to get to that. And, you know, talk, like, how do you respond to it? Mm. Like, oh, how do you intend to kill yourself? Oh, right now I have iPod beside me and I'm just going to drink it, blah, blah, blah. Oh, have you tried thinking about another method? I mean, just to keep them engaged, you know? So I always try to prioritize when somebody sends a message like, I want to kill myself. I try mm. to prioritize um have you ever attempted suicide before that's where i start from if mm. someone says yeah then that's a serious risk mm. <laughs> you know and then you're about to yeah. wow let's take a breather we'll be mm. back stay with us All 
All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, we're having a very sober conversation. Um, of course, we're dealing with issues around suicide prevention and you get, I mean, how to identify the warning signs. And we have KSA with us. I don't murder your name again. <laughs> um, NJ, you already had a question. Well, so um, I know you said, you mentioned after um, Jennifer's comment saying that, you know, people who are high energy, so in my mind, I was like, okay, so I'm high energy sometimes. And, but, and I understand perfectly well how it can go unnoticed because mm. I've been through a lot of things. I've had mm. cases of depression also. Mm. And um, it's, it's, it can be, I understand how people can get to that point yeah. where you make certain decisions, whether in the negative or hopefully we always praise in the positive. But in that time, how, how is it that, how does your mind get so blocked? I don't know if you understand what I'm about to ask. How does your mind get so blocked that a heavy stone on your chest can relate can, or can translate to you taking a knife to try and remove it? How does a person get to that point? Because it happens. We, we see it every day. We watch it in movies. And it just seems like a movie. You hear about it and it just seems like a movie. But how do you get to that point? Hmm. So for me, I mean, I had the, one of the greatest shock of my life, which was that my mom had passed and I saw her less than 24 hours before that time. And she was high spirit. <laughs> she was good. So it was crazy. Um, um, at that point, I was dealing with grief and I shut down everything else. You know, so stopped eating, sleeping three straight days, right? So, um, of course, I wasn't, I, I, I was, I, I'd crossed the borderline where um, thinking normally is concerned, right? So, really, we underestimate the power of our mind and of our body. And many times we do not even know ourselves as much as we think we do. Mm -hmm. You know, when you say that I can never find myself in a particular shoe, you've never actually, if you are put under the condition, no you are not sure of exactly what you're going to display, mm -hmm. right? So that's it. Nothing prepares you for shock, especially um, a, a high impact shock. Nothing prepares you for it. And in that moment, you're not sure of how. I mean, my, I lost my dad in 2020, right? last year, and it was a different ballgame. Right. It was different. It was different. It's like I hit a ceiling with my mom's death that I am so sure that I can not allow anything else get me to that point mm -hmm. again. Right. So I'd come to study and understand my body a bit more and my mind and how it works so I and how it handles your mind for whatever and so happens. I prepared my mind. Mm -hmm. And not only that, every other emotional or psychological thing that has impacted me. Mm -hmm. You know, so it depends on what state of life you have. It depends on the condition. It depends on the trigger, right? But more importantly, out of all of that is for us to keep learning about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Learning and relearning ourselves. Yeah. What kind of things get you angry mm -hmm. and get you upset? Because you don't just hit the ceiling. Right? You don't just hit the sin. I told you about somebody that lost her phone and is thinking suicide. She's not any better. A, a, a trigger is not any better than somebody that lost there. Mm. I mean, both of them are considering suicide. In fact, in her case, she had attempted suicide. Mm. I'd engaged a young girl, 23 year old, and said to me, Oh, she had attempted suicide three times. Her sister reached out to me, then I engaged her. And then she says, um, She's not making progress in life. And I said, Why? Oh, our friends are doing well. How did she know on Instagram? She sees their post and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's another story, the impact of social media. But look at how weak our mental strength is, right? To consider suicide based off that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so it's us being intentional. I feel like people don't invest in themselves long enough. No. They don't prepare themselves. Life, we need to accept the fact that life is tough. Life is going to be tough. If you've been happy all your life, something is still going to happen that is going to upset your day. Mm. 
right? How you handle it from the beginning is going to prepare you for whatever the bigger things that will the come. bigger things that will come. Yeah. So when you get angry, mm -hmm. when you get sad, what kind of so you process your emotions at every point in time. You get back from how work. do you respond to it? And then you just keep learning and unlearning yourself, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, let me just add this, right? Um, based off of what um, NJ asked, I know there was a time where I had, I went through, um, I lost someone and I never felt that kind of pain mm. before. So it was yeah. like, I actually wanted to remove oh, my heart. That's the and same I've feeling. I've heard people talk about that feeling and wow. I'm like, yeah, I, I've never felt that feeling, wow. right? A lot of people probably went through that when they were younger, mm. but I went through that when, like 2020. So it was a lot. And I think there was a day that I was thinking and I just told myself, God, I just want to sleep and not wake up for the next two years. Now, the thing is, I didn't think of offing myself and saying, oh, I, I want just to want to go permanently. I think in that moment, I just wanted that rest that where to I didn't have to feel that pain. And I'd heard people say, oh, sometimes it takes time, it could take a year, it could take two years. And mm. I was like, you know what? If there's a drug that I could take to sleep that would let years. me sleep for two years, and then when I wake up, that pain is gone, then I'll take it. I shit you not. If someone had given it to me in that moment of sure. pain, I would have taken it. But then another thing that, that I kept telling myself is, this is just one of those things that I, have, I would have to go through in life, and it would just you know, toughen me up. But that aside, one thing that I've noticed is I feel like sometimes people pick up bad behavior and bad things off the internet, right? When people watch movies, teenagers especially, watch movies and then they see how people are committing suicide over minor things, minor things mm. right? They get very influenced that when minor things happen to them, it's like, oh, this is such a huge thing. And I get it because as a teenager, the things that we see as adults, that we see them as minor, to them it's not minor. It's a big thing. Yeah, it's a big thing. Mm. So I'm in school and I realize that, oh, I'm failing or there's a particular person. Mm. They are very popular. Everybody loves them. I don't really have friends like that. In that moment, you feel like, oh, the world is against me. And sometimes as a teenager, you forget that you have family back at home that love you. But because you have the external factor that is not giving you what other people are receiving, it just feels like, you know what, the entire world is against me. I can't see what my own family is doing. I can't even see the love the next person is giving to me. And that's one of the things that I, I see these days. I might be wrong, but I just feel like, as, as adults and as parents, when we are around teenagers, we need to empower them more and let them know that, see, these things that you see online, right, they are not that important. People just come up to put this facade and just make it look glamorous. And all these movies that you watch, you shouldn't take it too literal, right? Don't just take it and think, oh, that's how your life is. Life is going to be tough. Life is going to be tough and there are things and steps that you need to take to be able to ride through it. And you also need to let people know that even as adults and as you grow older, there's still challenges in front. You just need to overcome one. Once you overcome one challenge or one hurdle, you're strengthened, right? Because when you get to the next hurdle, you're able to also overcome the next one. When the, the hurdle you overcome two years or three years ago comes, it looks like peanuts to you but i i don't know uh have you had like teenagers that you've spoken to or young adults who you feel like they were pretty, the thoughts of suicide right was probably influenced by something they had seen or something they had heard it might have it, it's probably not an inner desire of theirs but it just feels like oh maybe that's the easy way out some of them are just toying with the idea but it's not like that's what they really want to do mm. but because it seems like oh that's a popular thing people are doing these days but I was why not let me just quickly add to the question because i remember there's a video game at some point i don't know if you mm -hmm. yeah. 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 where they were actually leading young people so yeah. how much of that influence it's really bad um <clears throat> and thank you for that question by the way because um i'm looking forward to ways or platform in which we could or i could create awareness to parents as to how weak the minds of the children that we're raising these days are mm. and that journey does not start when the child is a teenager 
the journey starts from way back and it goes into what intentional parenting, right? Where you are not completely relaxed or you have confidence in the kind of school you sent your children to because it's an expensive school or because you have a nanny, you have a chef, you have people at home and you leave their upbringing mm. to these people, <laughs> you know. So that's what the pattern that we're seeing. So even at the level we're going into secondary school, I'm already meeting young people, not even teenagers, really young people, already slitting their wrists, slitting their laps, and they're showing me these cars that their parents have no idea because they always get, keep it covered. The school uniform is, you know, covered, you know, covers their skin. So you see that, and when you engage them at that level, some of these people don't even have access to the internet, mm. right? You know, so it's, but it still comes down to how somehow the media or whatever they have access to has made it feel like popular thing. You know how someone just tweets, I'm depressed. It's almost like a, a girl came to me once and said, Ma, I, I, I have seasonal depression. I said, do you know what it means? She doesn't even know what it means. I have seasonal depression. So you tag yourself, you know, and when people post it and they see that it's one of the celebrities or stars, like, oh, today I'm just having, I'm depressed, you know, and then they just feel like, oh, it's, it's almost like pop culture. It's a cool, it's a cool thing. It's yeah. a cool it's a thing. thing. But that's where it starts from. And then you keep building on it, building on it. You are mentally weak. You have no strength, no mental capacity. No at resilience all. at all. No resilience at all. And it feels like, you know what, you're not the only one mm. feeling this way. So mm. it's okay to let go. You know, it's interesting, um, this conversation, I, I know that a lot of people feel the need to want to always tag everything to, oh, my mental health, yeah. my mental health. And I think that's why, you know, we really need to draw the line you know, mm. on some of these things. Um, but let's take some comments. I think we have some comments. But there's something you guys did, I think it's Project Care First. Do you want to quickly touch on that? Oh, okay. Yeah, so I actually, um, on a board... Or Blue Room Care. Yeah. So Blue Room Care is the one doing project care first. Yeah. So I just uh, sponsored, I'm um, in, um, in celebration of Mental Health, Health Day, Day yesterday. Yeah. So just sponsored to offer their therapy at a 50% discount. Okay. You know, so um, that's currently on, right? So I mean, if anybody's interested, you could go on their Instagram page at Blue Room Care. Um, is a mental health organization. So you get therapy for as low as 2,000 naira. Awesome. Yeah. You know why I told you to talk about this? Because yesterday when we had the conversation, Dami was saying that a lot of people, even if they want to go to go and seek professional it's help, it's very expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Imagine somebody telling you that per session is 100,000 and you have to do maybe 10 th sessions or 150 uh, sessions. That's 1.5 million. Who is going to be able to afford that? Yeah. You know, some of these people they really don't have access to those financing, mm -hmm. right? So I like the idea that it's coming very, very, you know, at next to nothing as far as I'm concerned exactly. for people to be able to get help. So the reason she's saying, oh, I, I made you mention this is, if there's anybody watching and you know someone that is really going through um, a very tough period, please. I mean, there's people like her that they've dedicated their life's work, you know, to helping people come out of this state. Okay. Let's not let another person die just because they couldn't handle the pressure anymore and they had to take their lives. But let's quickly take some comments then we'll um, just quickly wrap up the conversation. So I have a comment. Uh, the way we can prevent uh, suicide is by sharing our challenges with the right person who can give better hope and reason to overcome it. And again, whatever background you come from, Always hope for progress. Don't involve yourself in negative or bad act that will affect you mentally. Okay. Mm. So I have a comment here that says, um, Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters. And what are you saying? Hashtag ways. You already know who this is. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't understand why people think of getting themselves <clears throat> involved in suicide. Trust me, suicide is not a solution to one's problem. It only adds to it. The most annoying thing is that people plan to commit suicide over a minor thing, according to my dear beautiful sister Jennifer. Suicide can be prevented if the person involved knows and accepts that it is wrong and demands for counseling and therapy. The thought of suicide should not exist at all. 
because it is dangerous and deadly. Nice to have my dear beautiful sisters, Jennifer and Wajaka back. I miss you all. My name is Daniel Eloway's regular fan. Hi, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. So, I mean, if you had one final thing to say to anyone watching, um, the pressure is real. Mm -hmm. I mean, these pressures will not go away, you know. And like you rightly said, a lot of us are being, uh, we're raising children that are not very, very strong emotionally. And I think you know we need to be able to strike that balance and create some some level of resilience in the, ch the life of the child. But we're looking at science now. But we didn't even touch on when you didn't find the science. What do you do quickly? Yeah. Do you reach out to people like you, or do you you know what exactly are the quick steps? If you can do that in a minute or two. Yeah. Okay. So that's if you have a family or friend that is. Um, you see some of the signs that you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, the first thing is to try to validate their pain, uh, make them feel that you are you concerned understand. about them and you care about them and you're um, set to offer support to them. And you can take it a step further by telling them that you help them seek professional help. Mm. So, I mean, I've had people that have reached out to us because um, a friend is paying for his friend, mm -hmm. you know, you know, and that way they feel more, hey, I've gone ahead to book this appointment with a therapist for you, you know. So, I mean, those are the ways you can. And then take off triggers around them, for mm -hmm. example. So if you have a suicidal child or something like that, I mean, because I've had those cases as well, you know, you want to ensure that they don't have, you don't have hypo pesticides or things like that hanging around or knives at their reach because, like I said, there are some that have immediate risk. And those people, you shouldn't feel stigmatized considering taking your children to seek professional help. Because, you know, based on our culture as well, people will bring in the religion to it and they want to start praying for the person. If somebody has openly even attacked, there was a news like that where the, the son had killed the mother and the father, had openly attacked, you know, someone or had talked about death or stuff, you need to know that, well, this person is very ready for therapy. And my final words will really be um, that there's something called the locus of control, right? And I say this quite a lot. And that is for each and every one of us, we have internal locus of control, you know, external locus of control. So the goal for everyone should be to live with a higher intensity of your internal locus of control. So they are living inside out as against outside in. But what you see many times is that many people, especially societal people, right, they're trying to pull the entire universe into themselves and becomes a very heavy weight. You know, you are happy today if work is good. Mm -hmm. External factors. You're happy because you are married. You're happy because you have, you have children. children. Very external factors, not coming from themselves. You'd be shocked that some people love other people more than they love themselves. Mm -hmm. They've never even imagined showing compassion to themselves. Mm -hmm. They say hateful things to themselves. To why, do you, why did you do such a stupid thing? You're a very stupid person. Mm -hmm. But they will not even use that for their friends. Mm -hmm. You know, so many people, a lot of the time, and I, I mean, I just to say celebrities, I've counseled mm -hmm. a few, right? You know, we live from the outside in and it can be a heavy ah, burden. It is, as it against is. living from the inside, inside out. out. You know, you understand your strength. Regardless. And your weakness. Like <laughs> Regardless. Mm -hmm. If they walk, I'm happy. You know, walk, I'm happy. I just, you know, mm -hmm. I, like I think I, maybe because of the downtime I, I went through. Wow. You know, it, it, like, literally, <laughs> I'm saying it because, uh -huh. honestly speaking, there's nothing that mm -hmm. will happen now that that will be the time. Uh, it will take. Somebody says, good evening, please. How far with laws in Nigeria that is sending people to jail for attempted suicide. Oh, well, on. it's a law. If you try to commit suicide, you fail. <laughs> You'll be jailed. You'll be jailed. But, yeah, it's a law. But we'll bring uh, we'll bring KSA back because me, I like the conversation. Instagram, yeah. they say, is the biggest um, platform of envy. Yeah. Of the course. biggest it's platform of envy. So we, we, need to, we need to understand, say, if you don't have the mind, the power, leave it there. But let's quickly, um, so thank you so much, KSA. I think uh, we'll continue this conversation because it's not something we can just start and stop. Mm -hmm. It has to be something that we keep on reiterating wow. yeah. and keep wow. talking about it. Wow. As far as we're concerned, the conversation is beyond us just having the conversation. It's helping somebody out there. Mm. So right, if you missed our quote for today, let me find our quote. It says, when you don't have the strength to take another step, please ask those you love to pull you. Mm. Just I mean, be open enough to just say, I need 
help. That's all. There'll be people that will run around you. But thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer, and thank you, Angie. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao.